What is aircraft controllability and why is controllability important to a pilot? In this video, I'm gonna explain that topic in detail because if you can understand controllability, it's gonna make you a much better pilot. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, I'm Josh, and today we're talking about controllability. Now, a few lessons ago, we talked about controlling the airplane, but today we're talking about controllability because that's something else you should know about. In a nutshell, controllability simply means that the aircraft is responsive to the control inputs that are made by the pilot. And I don't have to tell you how scary it is when you move the controls and the airplane just continues to do whatever it was doing. <laughs> On the other hand, if I was flying an airplane that had good controllability and I pushed down on the right rudder pedal, then that aircraft is gonna immediately yaw to the right. Another example would be if I rotated my yoke to the left. An aircraft with good controllability would immediately roll to the left. In the last lesson, we talked about stability, and that's important because stability directly affects the controllability of your airplane. In fact, for most airplanes, when stability decreases, so will your controllability. This means that if you want your airplane to do what you tell it when you move the controls, the airplane must be stable. Let's talk about why that is. In the last lesson, we talked about how the airplane is balanced on its center of lift. And then the center of gravity is placed in front of the center of lift to make the aircraft nose heavy. And when the aircraft starts moving through the air, the tail creates a downforce which moves the apparent center of gravity back, which then balances out the airplane. A balanced airplane has great controllability, but what would happen if we place the center of gravity too far back, or even behind the center of lift? Yeah, the airplane couldn't balance on its center of lift anymore, could it? This means that your airplane is not gonna be stable if it's not balanced properly, and this means that the airplane will be much more difficult to control as well. Now you might be wondering how the center of gravity could be too far back. This can be caused by a few things, but in a small aircraft, this can be caused by putting too much baggage in the cargo compartment, which sits behind the center of lift. Or if you have a really fat passenger like your mom, and she sits in the back seat behind the center of lift, then this could cause your center of gravity to be aft of its allowable limits. Because most of the back seats in these airplanes are behind the center of lift. Keep in mind, an airplane is going to be more difficult to control when the center of gravity is aft of its allowable limits. But it could actually be impossible to control if you were to stall the airplane during this condition. If you're wondering why that is, I want you to think about how our airplane is balanced. Remember, the aircraft's tail is used to balance out the airplane. But what's one more thing we need in order for the tail to be effective? Yeah, the tail needs air flowing over the top and bottom of it so it can push the nose up and down. And this means that when we're flying at low air speeds, the tail, just like all the other controls, is going to have less control authority. Let's say the nose of our airplane was pitched way up like this, and we stalled the airplane. Under normal circumstances, this wouldn't be a big deal because we just pitch down and break the stall by reducing the angle of attack, wouldn't we? But if the center of gravity was too far back when this happened, you might not actually be able to push the nose back down because the weight is too far back and the tail doesn't have enough control authority to overcome that unbalanced weight. In this case, the airplane could potentially fall all the way to the ground, tail first. As you can see, the center of gravity is extremely important when we're considering the controllability of an airplane. But what would happen if we move the center of gravity too far forward? As a general rule, stability increases as the center of gravity moves forward, as long as the tail can create enough downforce to balance out the airplane. But what would happen if we move the center of gravity too far forward? Well, if we moved it too far up here, then the tail would not be able to create enough downforce to keep the airplane balanced. In most cases, the first place you would notice this would be during the takeoff roll, because you wouldn't be able to pitch the nose of your airplane up because the nose is so heavy. Boy, that'd be scary, wouldn't it? Stalls wouldn't necessarily be a problem, though, because the nose is really heavy in this situation. This means that we should have plenty of tail authority to pitch down and reduce the angle of attack during a stall. But climbing or pitching up might be a problem because there may not be enough wind going over the tail to move the nose of the airplane up. Okay, so stability is the first thing that affects our ability to control the airplane. But there's actually a few other things that affects our aircraft's controllability. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Now we've already been talking a little bit about this, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up again because I believe that it's the most important thing that affects controllability. What is the one thing we need for the control surfaces to move our airplane? Yeah, we need relative wind moving over them, don't we? I mean, you can't roll an airplane that's just sitting there on the ground when there's no wind, can you? 
No, you can't. You've got to have relative wind. And the faster the relative wind is, the more control authority you have or the more controllable your airplane is. That's one reason why airspeed is so important. The faster you can get an airplane to move, the more controllable it is because there's more air flowing over and under the control surfaces. In fact, this is a big reason why we teach you slow flight during your flight training. We want you to see how mushy the controls are when you're flying really, really slow. Another thing that affects controllability is angle of attack. Keep in mind, angle of attack is directly related to these other things we've already been talking about. But it's important to consider because angle of attack plays a big role in the controllability of your airplane. Now, unless your mom moves around the airplane, the center of gravity doesn't typically move during flight. But if we change the angle of attack by pitching the nose of the airplane down, something really interesting happens. Anytime we pitch the nose of the airplane down and speed up, the center of pressure moves back on the wing a little bit. This in turn causes the center of gravity to be further away from the center of lift, even though the CG doesn't actually change. Because of this, and because the airplane speeds up when the nose is lowered, this causes the airplane to be more stable because the tail is creating more downforce as well. This would be a lot like balancing a pencil on your finger. Which one of these do you think would be easier to balance? Yeah, this long one, right? And the same thing happens when the center of gravity is further away from our balancing point and the tail is creating more downforce. And if this is true when we pitch the nose of the airplane down, then the opposite must be true when we increase the angle of attack on our airplane. Anytime we pitch the nose of the airplane up, the center of lift moves forward. Once again, the CG doesn't change, but the CG is now closer to the center of lift because the center of lift moved forward. And because we pitch the nose of the airplane up, our tail is creating less downforce because we're moving slower. This is a lot like widening your stance when you're standing. Do you think you're going to have more control over your balance if you have a wider or narrower stance? Yeah, a wider stance is better, isn't it? The last way we can affect controllability is through power changes. Anytime the engine is moving the propeller, air will flow over and under the aircraft control surfaces. And this air is part of some of the wind that makes up relative wind. But this particular part of relative wind actually has a name. We call it the slipstream. Anytime wind from the slipstream moves over and under the control surfaces of an airplane, the pilot will have more control over the aircraft when this happens. Keep in mind, some airplanes have control surfaces that are outside of the slipstream. And this means that those particular controls will not be affected by power changes. One particular example of this is a T-tail aircraft like this Piper Tomahawk. On aircraft like this, the tail is not affected anytime you make power changes because it's not getting any air from the slipstream. Now, even in this airplane, once the airplane slows down, the tail is going to be creating less downforce. So when this happens, the nose will drop, but not until the airplane slows down, or you go from a headwind to a tailwind. And that's important for you to remember because if you're flying an airplane with a standard tail, this means that anytime you reduce the power, the nose is going to want to drop on you. So if you don't want that to happen, then you need to be anticipating it. And here's a little bonus for you. On the C-130, they place the engines directly in front of the wings. And this is cool because pushing up the power gives this airplane instant lift as well. In fact, they call this the blown wing, and this allows this aircraft to climb like a beast whenever the pilot pushes up the throttles to max power. And then this extra power also gives the pilot a nice boost of aileron authority in this plane as well, because those are right there in the slipstream. So, if you want a little more control over your airplane, these are the things you should be thinking about, and this knowledge is going to make you a better pilot. For example, let's say you stalled your airplane and you lost control authority of the tail. Yes, breaking the stall is the most important part of recovery, but what's something else you can use to help you get more control over the airplane during a stall? Yeah, by adding power, this can send wind over and under the tail of the aircraft through the slipstream, which can help you regain control of the aircraft. That's why I like to use the Air Force motto of max relax roll during a stall. Yes, breaking the stall is the most important step in recovering from a stall, but you can easily do all three of these at the same time, and adding power at the same time that you're breaking a stall will give you more control over the aircraft. Unless, of course, you're flying a T-tail like the old Tomahawk. And that is everything you need to know about controllability. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about flaps, and that's a super important lesson that you don't want to miss out on. And don't forget, if you're enjoying this totally free training and you need an endorsement for the FAA written exam, be sure to check out my premium course at freepilottraining.net. That's only $50 over there. So thanks for watching. See ya.